with delayed sleep phase disorder, we tend to look at the timing. So if it was in clinic, we would use an actigraph watch, which is uh, a really expensive watch that just measures movement, basically. Some of them measure light as well. Um, so we would see when someone's active, when someone's less active. Uh, and do it for a week or two. And that would give us a sense, is this, um, is this a body clock thing? So is someone kind of hardwired to do this or is it more of a behavioral thing? So sometimes the watches can pick up light uh, and we might notice there's little bursts of blue light. So there's a bit of movement, burst of blue light and it's pretty obvious that it's a phone. And then we kind of look at uh, motivations for change. So we do, we'd look at kind of what's good about staying up at night what's not so good and kind of give a choice and think about the positives of, of not being awake at night if someone's going to before 3 a.m we think about pulling the sleep onset time uh, towards an earlier time by about 15 minutes a night so trying to do bedtime 15 minutes earlier wake time 15 minutes earlier if yeah. someone's got to 3 a.m or later then we would offer chronotherapy. Um, so that's a more radical approach. But it, strangely, it's easier. Um, it just is more kind of intrusive on day-to-day -day life. So with that, what we do is say, okay, so you're not going to get to sleep till three in the morning. There's no point going to bed before that time. So often when people have insomnia, they'll, they'll still go to bed and try to sleep. Mm. And what that does is confuses the brain and body about, okay, I'm getting these signals, I'm in bed, I'm lying down, uh, it's dark, but I'm not sleepy and I'm not sleeping. And then you start worrying and kind of, bed becomes a really unpleasant place. So we'd say, no point going to bed before the time that you're likely to fall asleep. At that time, go to bed, but then start pushing it later. So we, we would actually, if we're going later with chronotherapy, we would do three hours at a time. So okay. from three to six, six to nine, and go all the way through so um, through the daytime. It takes about seven to 10 days to do it. And so we would usually say, do it in half term if you're still going to school, but a lot of these people probably aren't going to school. So it, it's, it's gonna be beneficial to just do it as soon as possible. Um, and when you're doing that, uh, you're also shifting all the meal times, all the shower times, all the breakfast time, you know, everything is going round so that you're still getting these consistent uh, things that say it's time to be awake, it's time to be asleep. And then the hard part is, is locking it in. So you get to the desired bedtime, wake time, and all the way through, you've been slightly sleep deprived. So you've made it the whole time a little bit shorter than the desired time. So you've shortened it a little bit. The idea of that is to build up sleep pressure. Then when you get to the desired time, you can lock it in with sometimes they might prescribe a little bit of melatonin uh, to because all melatonin does is help someone fall asleep um, and then the sleep deprivation the small amount of sleep deprivation we would hope would keep them asleep and then in the morning when they wake up we would uh, often provide them if it wasn't summer especially with a really bright blue light that they can then place it doesn't have to be right in your face but kind of at breakfast time just there and that blue light makes the melatonin go plummet, uh, which means that you're more likely to be able to be awake. 